Uh, I'm Tracy Bewley. I'm Rick Bewley, and we own Art Fusion Studio. This is a um, glass viewing studio that my wife and I own and operate, doing primarily fused glass, but we're really mixed media artists. We work with everything from wood to metal, three-dimensional sculpture, both small and large. I never made a conscious choice to be artistic or I have art as my living or career. It was, it was never a choice. It was always something that I've had to do. We, we do have day jobs. This is, this is kind of what we do for, for fun, for entertainment. We did meet at work. <laughs> we, we met at Midwest Trophy. Um, and then how we got into the, the glass that we do now is basically we both discovered that we both loved art and we were going to a lot of art festivals and things like that, but we would always be lying to the glass booths. It didn't matter what kind of glass. We both just discovered that this was something we mutually enjoyed. All right, so we're going to start with blues and greens at the bottom. Yeah, let's start with the blues and greens and, um, and then go towards the uh, turquoises to the yellows. What we're working on here today is a, uh, a project for a client who wanted to add some color to their entryway. They uh, wanted something bright and colorful, and we came up with the idea for these colorful butterflies. We're gonna, they're all, they're all glass, it's fused glass. We started off fusing sheets of colored glass together, and then we cut the colored glass into the shapes of the butterflies, and then they individually get bent. You'll notice each one of them has a, a bend of the wings slightly different, there's no two the same. Added uh, hangers and antenna to them so that we can hang them on the wall. There's uh, 50 plus, we're not even sure how many we have, we just know, know that we needed to make a bunch and we really don't know until we get on site as to where and how many exactly are gonna go on the walls. Well, we definitely like working with um, clients that, that come to us with an idea, it'll, it'll take us a different direction than we, we go on our own, and it, and it usually creates for something new and different we've not done or thought of before. Definitely a uh, performance installation. We didn't know where anything went exactly till we got here, so we started at the bottom and putting some screws in and hanging some butterflies, and we've ended up with over 50 of these really colorful butterflies that go all the way up this entryway and almost to the ceiling on this far side. And it's, uh, I think it's exceeded our expectations. The glass itself, the properties of both uh, opaque glass and transparent glass, uh, working them together, I mean, you, you just can't beat it. It, it glows and uh, even people that don't necessarily consider themselves art fans will love glass. A lot of times when you're showing somebody or talking to somebody about glass, they have no idea how you did that. There's, there's nothing in their background life experiences for them to understand how you've created something out of glass that they're looking at. Uh, you can see into it, you can see through it, you can see past it. it, it reflects colors. When you shine a light on it, it will transmit those colors onto things behind it. So it's not the only surface that you're dealing with. You know, depending on how you light it or sus suspend it, you can end up with four different pieces. You know, it's reflection, it's shadow, it's transmittance. And so there's just a lot going on there that, that is fun to, to see happen. The trees are what we consider some of our signature pieces. Uh, they are lots of little pieces of, of glass that have been overlaid each other while they were cold. They were hand cut like you would think of a stained glass piece. So you have lots of little raw pieces of glass with sharp edges. You kind of overlay them in a basic tree shape. Then you transfer that design into the kiln and then you cook that till that everything melts together. So uh, this is the tree I made yesterday. Uh, I used different shades of red so that it would have a, a little more variety to it. Uh, the next step will be uh, slumping it so that it has more form like a, a three-dimensional tree. Oh, okay. The pieces that we're working on currently represent the work that we're going to be uh, showing and selling at the o Oklahoma City Arts Festival. We have a body of work that is based on some thicker uh, 
blocks and chunks and it's a type of casting not really melting glass and casting it it's a it's a process we've kind of worked out ourselves so these pieces take you know eight to ten times as much glass as our regular work they're in the kiln uh, for three days instead of overnight it's it's all about cooking and annealing and keeping them from uh, fracturing under thermal shock it's one of the most difficult fused glass projects that we've that we've taken on if we can make something we've not seen before, it's great. And if we can make something nobody's seen before, it's the absolute uh, you know, bonus that we're after. The story behind the building is uh, you know, my, my family's all in the real estate business. And uh, my dad, who's always on the lookout for a, for a deal, called us up one afternoon and, and had us look this place up online. He'd spotted it under uh, you know, properties for sale and a, you know, very cool 1918 two-story 8,000 square foot building. And uh, we talked about it for about five minutes. We knew uh, Stephen Kovash was looking for a new gallery space. We knew Andy Boatman, Blue Sage Studios, was looking for a new place to put his glass blowing facility and that we could eventually, you know, put our living quarters upstairs. There's a, you know, there's 3,000 square foot upstairs to, to turn into living space. So we meet our dad down here about 20 minutes later and we get out of the car and we tell him we'll take it. I was looking for a new place to set up the studio and he said, come check it out. And um, did and it just worked out perfect. Great building. One of the reasons I wanted to do this was because there's a lack of decent um, gallery space for artists in Oklahoma and there's maybe four or five uh, commercial galleries that are good and I wanted to provide some more space for them and so this was the perfect opportunity for me to do that so um, the fair only lasted about three weeks and then I just jumped in and we got it started our opening night we had more people than we could even fit in the place it was incredible we can't believe our luck you know it's it's um, it, it's living the dream there's there's a a thousand other artists out there that would just love to stumble into a situation like we have here. And, you know, there's a little bit of guts that goes along with taking on a project like this, which, or we, we call it lack of sense, but, um, you know, we never even thought about it not being a great place or it not working out quite right. It was just on from the beginning. And the energy that's associated with the other artists that are here has been what we had envisioned or hoped it would be. The, the synergy that goes on with creativity around us all day, every day. Well, it's just me. I own the studio. Um, and folks come in and rent time. And so there's about 24 folks that are regular here that come in once a week, maybe tw once every two weeks. We do do lessons, we give lessons, so that's part of, of what we do, um, demonstrations. We have a lot of school groups come in, 20 or 30 kids and watch, and we explain what's going on and some of the physics behind it, the science behind it. So there's more to it than, hey, they're just making glass and creating. There's actually a, a science to the, the process, which is pretty neat. It's definitely a community space. Um, some galleries are a little intimidating for just the average citizen. And we, we're kind of like, if we're open, please come in and don't be afraid to look. And, you know, just wander around and, and, and be a part of it. We all try to show kind of urban, edgy artists, and I sort of specialize in emerging artists. Uh, kids or maybe some grown-ups that haven't had a chance to show in, in a gallery before but their work is really, really good. It's just an incredible space and people are drawn to it because we have a community outlook and we want to bring different folks in here. We have storytelling, we have film and video, we have poetry readings, and we have art shows in addition to all the fun parties that we have. We have such a, a great working relationship with everybody. Everybody is so easygoing and easy to get along with. I think we've gotten extremely lucky with the, with the group of people that we get to work with here. Yeah, there's no there's no locked doors from studio to studio. Everybody here comes there's and no goes. There's no drama. <laughs> <laughs> it's unique. We offer something that you can't find anywhere else, really. And then the uh, interactive aspect of it, I guess, because we are artists that are accessible. 
you know, so many times a painter may paint for three months or six months on a painting, and they do it in their little space in their studio, and there's not a lot of communion. And with what we do, the more people, the better. The glass blowers have a steady stream of people coming through. The you know, glass blowing is such a cool performance art in itself. Sometimes I don't think they even care about the finished piece. It was the process, especially if they get three or four or five of them working on the same piece. It's it's really a camaraderie thing that they that they really seem to enjoy. And then Stephen has handled everything else that you know we, we don't have time to work with artists or put on shows or deal with galleries or collect commissions or anything else and he has he has handled that he's arranged all of the art shows he's arranged all of the artists that show here um, events that, you know there's been weddings here there's been live music here and, and every time one of those things happens here you know mm -hmm. Tracy and I'll just look at each other and go how cool is it to live here man this is fun So this is the part of the loft that's not quite finished yet. We've uh, done some of the fun things that we like to do. We've created some furniture in here. We've got the dining room table that we created and built. Made a matching light fixture to go with it. We've been uh, doing all the work ourselves and uh, sometimes time or money doesn't allow for much progress to happen. But uh, again, we're very comfortable up here. The, the important parts for us are, are in place. We can, we can hang and watch TV, we can sleep, we can you know, have clean laundry. So we're looking forward to, to actually finishing it. I, I don't know, we've not lived in a finished house as long as we've been together, so. But it, it's a big art project for us. That's kind of one of the reasons why it takes so long is we're not just putting in you know, normal materials and, and doing a normal way that you might normally remodel or build something. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll spend a lot of time deciding what we want to do in a particular room or space that'll make it unique or different or creative. And then being right upstairs from our studio. I mean, we, we you know, can literally just walk downstairs and, and get to work. And, you know, we have our day jobs also, but nights and weekends, we, you know, if we work till uh, 9, 10 o'clock downstairs, then we don't still have a drive home. We're living the dream. I think so. I don't see how you could go through all the upheaval in our lives that we've gone through through by choice without having a strong belief in each other and in the fact that we can do this. Nobody likes art like other artists, you know. It's just part of who you are and, and you gravitate towards other artists and you, know, you all speak the same language. And have the same enthusiasm and passion. We'll just, we'll just look up and remind each other, this is really fun, this is, this is really cool. This is what we want to be doing.